You have accomplished a task once thought too difficult. Now, at the end of your trial, it's time for your reward. You have earned it. Now, play. Greedy is one of the best guaranteed rewards given in the game. She brings value to any roster, regardless of investment you have put in. From her defense breaks through control, she will keep your enemies at bay. And if all else fails, she brings a level of sustain and support to help your team standing through the toughest battles. In this highlight, I will show you the potential builds Lydia has, from her impact in the game and role she can bring, to where she can be a game changer. And I'll even touch on the type of heroes she synergizes well with. Lydia is the second progression champion given in the game, and she follows suit behind Arbiter packing a lot of value into her kit, which makes her well worth the Faction Wars grind that you just completed. So much so that she actually overshadows some of her rare counterparts, such as Draco Morph and Venus, in certain areas of the game. Now let's go ahead and head over to her kit and see what she brings into battle. Now, looking at her kit and considering what role she brings, her strongest role would be a, a debuffer, AoE defense down, weak in, uh, plenty of control with fear, her counter attack. That isn't all she brings. She also brings plenty of sustain. With her 25% strengthened buff and her 30% uh, increased speed buff, um, finding a little synergy in your team could actually make these overwhelmingly strong buffs and bring a lot of sustain to your team. She also blocks revive, and that is huge for so many areas of the game. Whether you're doing PvP or PvE, being able to block revive can actually make or break your strategy. Not only that, but her increased speed buff actually allows her to be a keystone in a very strong strategy in clan boss. With any buff extender, you can create a 2-1 clan boss speed tune team based around Lydia herself. She also has some focused uh, crowd control and very useful as like a high defense, high resist team lead in arena. Now we're gonna talk more about the areas of the game and how she performs them. Now, speaking of her speed buff and the uh, being a keystone in a very unique strategy for clan boss, I actually utilize that skill in my clan boss team to create a 2-1 clan boss team. I have mine here and I'm going to kind of show you how she works a little bit. But outside of just that, she brings defense down weak and she brings poison sensitivity. You know, I, I, I use Frozen Banshee, but I also am known to use uh, Nethril for um for fours you know she she synergizes real well in clan boss and honestly i think that is her best area of the game now that being said i am actually going to be creating a new team infinity infinity gauntlet team coming soon um that will actually remove lydia from my clan boss team and as well i'm sad to see her go uh she is just so useful in so many er other areas of the game that um honestly i i, I won't i i won't be losing her abilities any at all in my roster all right so i'm not gonna sit here and watch the whole clan boss run but now we're gonna hop over and check out other areas of the game that she's very well at now as i've said before um a lot of her kit is actually very useful in pvp so much so that i actually believe that arena and 3v3 in particular is probably her second strongest area of the game especially if you decide to opt out and uh, building her for clan boss um, I use her in a very meme team here, but she brings a lot of value here, especially in a team like this where it performs a lot based on the type of team that I'm facing. <clears throat> Not only does she bring the resistance, but she also has that lockout skill and the block buffs, which can be quite useful in a lot of the, uh, the teams you'll see in 3v3. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put us in here and you can kind of see what she does. But now with my team, um, I do have plenty of nukers, but I, I actually enjoy this kind of team right here. As you've seen, Tormund froze everyone. She now lays down the AoE defense down and weaken. And by attacking Madame, Tyrant got true feared and Lydia had counterattacked her with that control, which actually helped to lead to Madame going down. Building her for damage actually isn't a bad idea, even though she's primarily a debuffer. Uh, like I said before, Murder Inc. actually has a video building her DPS style. Uh, where she utilizes that counter attack on her A1, that passive effect, uh, to, to counter attack a lot, a lot more often, which will allow her to not only help control your enemies, but also do respectable damage. So that was just a little taste. Uh, as you've seen, the, the Arbiter speed lead team with uh, a, a Kaimar, Trunda, like just an OP strong team, and they went first, actually got outdone by... Uh, by my mean team.
once I can get her out of the clan boss build, she'll actually be built with speed, resistance, accuracy. Um, so that way she can make sure that she pops off her skills first. She's the fastest of the team. Um, to be able to help control the enemies while the rest of my strategy for the team kicks in. And she done almost as much damage as Tormund. And Tormund's AoE, you've seen him pop off a couple times there. So all in all, in PvP, she just does an amazing job. Uh, she's got the block re the block uh, revive. So, you know, against Arbiters and stuff, if you are not able to finish them off by the time Arbiter gets her second turn, uh, then it, it'll pretty much waste Arbiter's turn. The, the resistance lead, very helpful in a team like this. AoE defense down weakened, lockout, fear. It's like she just has so much to bring in, P in PvP format. So again, if you're not going to use her in clan boss, I would highly suggest a building her to optimize your PvP, as particularly in 3v3 build, because not only will it make her stronger in arena, but those builds are actually quite useful in other PvE content outside of clan boss. When it comes to the builds for Lydia, it all really depends on what area of the game you want to focus her build on. I have mine built for clan boss, so I'm using stalwart, but things like lifesteal, speed, accuracy, the, the common sets used for clan boss is all viable as well. Again, the stats kind of determine, the stats you want to reach kind of determine uh, what level of clan boss you're fighting and also what strategy you're going to use, whether you're going to use a 2 1 speed tune or something, you know, more sustainable. Just all depends on your strategy. But there's other builds that you can use if you're not going to use her in clan boss, such as Arena. Swift Parry and Stalwart both seem to be a fan favorite for the PvPers out there. Um, but there is also that counterattack build I've mentioned before where you can build her in more offensive sets, uh, build her for DPS. And if you're going to go that route, you know, don't neglect the, that thought of counterattacking when it comes to things like revenge accessories or when you're building your masteries out. For Doom Tower, if you're going to use her exclusively for Doom Tower, just fast, accurate, and tanky, you know, a really simple debuffer kind of build will we'll do good there. Make sure you have high speed, accuracy requirements for the, you know, the higher levels. And so self-sustain is helpful. So things like Immortal Sets, um, even Regen, if you want to go that route, if you have a lot of HP built in there. For Dungeon Builds, it's pretty much the same. Any of the previous builds will do well for your dungeons. Um, again, depending on the strategy you use. And that really kind of the same applies for Faction Wars and other dungeons. Any, any of the Clan Boss Arena or Doom Tower builds that are more focused are going to work here. Uh, the only difference might be, uh, you know, whether you want to focus more on accuracy or speed or might even need a little more tankiness. Uh, again, just kind of depends on the strategy you're using. As far as masteries go, um, if you're going to go clan boss route, then going down to war master is a must for sure. As far as defense or support tree, kind of depends on your gear. If you have if you have some really nice gear, you're more leaning towards end game, um, then the support tree might not be for you. Uh, you might want to go more defense tree for clan boss. Get, try to get that them counter attacks in there. Uh, higher resist for each buff she places. Remember she places quite a few buffs. Things like that. And just be able to let her be able to tank more damage. But if you have finished faction wars pretty early in your game progression. And your gear isn't quite up to par. Then maybe going support tree might be uh, more viable. I will put some... Uh, some images up here of a few different fact uh, mastery builds that might be you know more doom tower or arena focused as well as links to those underneath um again depends on the area of the game you want to focus on but the the basics would kind of be war master if you want her to be more offensive um and then defense tree if your gear's good support tree if you know you're still progressing into that late game now as i promised i would show some champions that she synergizes well with at this point in time i will go ahead and cover a few other champions or types of champions that she synergizes well with